Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reason why you brought us into your kingdom is that so that we may be partakers of divine nature. We pray, Lord Jesus, you will release your nature unto us abundantly in Jesus' name. We thank you because we believe you have answered, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. Thank God we have come for the afternoon lecture. We bless the name of the Lord for the morning lecture, the first morning lecture, the second morning lecture. This is the first afternoon lecture. You remember yesterday, we started talking about fire. Remember for quite some time, we have been looking at seven lamps of fire. Open your Bible to Revelation, Revelation chapter four. Revelation chapter four, I read verse five. Revelation chapter four, I read verse five. Look at verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So, for quite some time, we have been examining these three keywords seven lamps and fire. Already we have discussed in full details seven, and we have also discussed about lamp. And finally, we are talking about fire. Yesterday, we saw how the fire came upon the early disciple, Act chapter one. Today, we'll be talking about the topic, Divine Nature. What are we talking about? Divine Nature. So yesterday, we see how the fire came upon the early disciple. How fire came upon the early disciple. That's what we discussed yesterday. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 again. Acts chapter 1, I read verse 4. Open your Bible. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. In Acts chapter 1, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, sorry. In Acts chapter 2, verse 3. Sorry. Acts chapter 2, verse 3. And there appear unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And we tried to find out yesterday what is this fire that come upon them. And we discover the fire from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. Open your Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. Look at verse 24. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. So the fire that came upon the disciples on the day of the Holy Ghost is very God himself. Fire is the nature of God. Look at that verse 24 again. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. So it was the very God that came upon the disciples on the days of Pentecost. In other words, they are receiving the nature of God, which we refer to as divine nature. Look at Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. 
Second Peter chapter 1. Open your Bible. Second Peter chapter 1. I read verse 3. According as his divine power has given to us all things pertaining unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Fast forward. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promise that by this we might be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. So the fire that came upon the early disciples on the day of Pentecost is divine nature the very nature of God, the power of God, the anointing of God. And the Bible called that fire is the spirit of the living God. Look at Acts, Acts chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Acts chapter 2, Verse 3 and 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Are you there? Look at verse 3 and 4. And there appear unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and he sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them all trance. Now fire came upon them on that day. And the Bible say, it was immediately the fire came upon them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. So it means the fire that came upon them is the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 3. Are you following? Thank you very much. Matthew chapter 3. Open your Bible. We are talking about divine nature today. Matthew chapter 3. Open your Bible. Are you there? I read verse 16. Verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. The Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Here we see the Spirit of God coming upon the Lord Jesus Christ as a dove. As what? As a dove. But on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God came upon the disciple, it came as fire. Acts chapter 2, verse 3 again. Acts chapter 2, verse 3 again. And there appear unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and he sat upon each of them. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came upon the early believer as fire. The day when the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized in water, the Holy Ghost came as a dove. You want to ask a very pertinent question. Is there any difference between a dove and fire? 
Is there any difference between a dove and fire? Obviously. A dove is gentle. A dove does not struggle with anybody. Is gentle spirit. And so when the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus, he came as dove. A dove is gentle. So he doesn't destroy. Fire is dynamic. It can destroy. That's why we see in that Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24, that God is a consuming fire. We want to ask ourselves a pertinent question. Why didn't the Holy Ghost come upon our Lord Jesus Christ as fire? Where? Himself answered that question in John. John, open your Bible. Open your Bible. John. Chapter Hallelujah. John John chapter Hallelujah. Just forgive me, I'm trying to look for the fast that I want to read from. Hallelujah. So don't forget what I was saying. What I'm saying is that the Lord Jesus Christ himself explained. Luke chapter 10. Let's see Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I couldn't get the first. I'm very sorry. I never prepared that I would quote that first. It just come to my mind. But let me explain what is there. Now, the Bible told us that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to Jerusalem. And he had to pass through a village of Samaritan. 
And when they saw that his face is was set as somebody that was going to Samaritan, they told him they block his way. They say he will never pass through their village. Then John and James said, "Say they have treated you like this, master. Let us call down fire from heaven and destroy them." And the Lord Jesus Christ told them. You do not this you do not know the spirit of what you are made for. For the Son of Man cometh not to destroy life, but to save life. So Jesus Christ did not come to pass judgment upon anybody. So dove does not pass judgment upon anybody. When you look at John chapter 3, you will see the reason why God sent Jesus Christ. John chapter 3, I read verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. Look at it. For God so loved the world that he gave not his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Look at verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So Jesus Christ did not come to condemn anybody. Jesus Christ did not come to judge anybody. When you look at fire, fire is about judgment. And that's why when they caught that woman in the very act of adultery, they brought her to Jesus. Jesus said, neither have I condemn you, but go and sin no more. The Lord Jesus Christ did not come to condemn anybody. Rather, he came to seek and to save those that were lost. That's why the Holy Ghost did not come upon him as fire. Because when you are talking of fire, you are talking of judgment. The Holy Ghost came as dove, gentle dove who doesn't condemn anybody. Gentle dove. Who doesn't judge anybody. When you look at Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18, you will understand what we are talking about. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Are you there with me? Look at verse 18. Or let me read from verse 17 so that you understand. And there was delivered unto him the book of Proverbs Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And which spirit are we talking about? Dove. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20, and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue who were fasting on him now the lord jesus christ did not finish the fast he was reading before he closed the book because the other part of that fast was talking about vengeance the other part of that fast was talking about judgment the other part of that verse was talking about condemnation. And since the Holy Ghost upon him does not come to condemn, does not come to judge, that's why he stopped at the middle of the fact. Let's see the book of Isaiah where he read from. Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. Because I want us to get this point. Why the Holy Ghost came upon him as do. And he came upon the early disciple as fire. 
Look at first one, Isaiah 61, first one. This is where he read from. Look at it. And the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. The Lord Jesus Christ read the whole first one. When you come to fast two, he stop at the middle. And when you come to fast two, he, he, he stop at the middle. Look at fast two. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's where he stop. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The remaining part of that fast two, he didn't read. The remaining part say, and the day of vengeance of our God. Fire is about vengeance. And because Jesus Christ did not come for vengeance, he came to save. He didn't come to judge. He came to set men free. He didn't come to, to condemn. He came to deliver people from their sin. For his name shall be called Jesus. Because he I save his people from their sin. So that's why Jesus Christ came into the world. So that's why the Holy Ghost did not come upon him as fire. Now when you look at the early disciple, on the contrary, the Holy Ghost came as fire. Now, understand there are three dispensations. Amen? There are three dispensations. There is Old Testament dispensation. There is New Testament dispensation. When Jesus Christ was physically on the earth. And there, are, there is dispensation of the church. When the Holy Ghost came down. The dispensation of Jesus Christ, he came only to save. The dispensation of the Holy Ghost is the dispensation that started when the Holy Ghost came down on the day of Pentecost. The dispensation of the Holy Ghost is not only to bring men to salvation, but to so also judge the people, to also condemn where are necessary. So that's why after Jesus Christ has come and gone, on the day of Pentecost, Holy Ghost came upon the disciples as fire. As what? As fire. And when the Holy Ghost came as fire, we have read already in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24, that God will see consuming fire. That's the nature of God. He's a jealous God. He wants you to serve him. If you want to serve him, you cannot be serving him and be flirting with another God. So he's a consuming fire. So on the day of Pentecost, he came upon the early believer as fire, which is a consuming fire. And so when you come to Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, you will see a man called Ananias. And Savira, his wife, and they came to the apostles to deceive them. Look at, but a certain man named Ananias with Savira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie 
to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land of the land. Why it remained? Was he not thy home? After it was so, was he not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied to men but unto God. And Ananiah hearing this were fell down and gave up the Holy Ghost. And great fear came on all them that had these things. Now, obviously, you know, the Peter that is talking here also lied three times. How many times? Three times. They asked him, he said, you are a disciple of Jesus. He said, I don't know him. They asked him second time. He started swearing. Firstly, they asked him third time. He started cursing. If I know him, this and that should happen to him. He did that to Jesus, not to Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost doesn't tolerate nonsense. Jesus tolerated him because he didn't come to condemn. The anointing upon him is the anointing of a priest, dove, gentle. David said, Thy gentleness has made me great. It's gentle, gentle with Peter. You only look at him to let him know that what you have done is wrong. And as Jesus looked at him, he remembered what he had told him before. And he went out and wept bitterly. Matthew. Matthew chapter 20. Six. The 26 or 27. Matthew chapter 26. Are you there? I read verse 69. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou seest. And when he was gone out into the porch, Another man saw him and said unto him that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath. You see that? And again he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. Verse 73. And after a while came also unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speech berates thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, say, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. Verse 75. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, before the call crew, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. He denied, he told lies three times. And that lies were in progression. The first lie was a denier. The second lie was an oath. The third one was both oath and swearing and cursing. Yet, Jesus had the anointing of a dove, the anointing of a priest. He did not come to condemn. He came to save. And so after Jesus Christ has died and buried, on the third day when he resurrected, the first person he mentioned, is Peter. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Are you there? 
Matthew 28. In the end of the Sabbath, first one, in the end of the Sabbath, as he began to dance towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake, and became as dead men. And the angel answers, said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here for his reason. And as he said, Come, seek the place where the Lord lay. Verse 7, and go quickly and tell his disciple that he's risen from there, and behold, he went before you into Galilee. There is, I see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All A. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Look at fast 10. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Fast 11. Now when they were going, behold, some of the, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. But when Jesus met those women, he specifically told them, tell Peter, look at John. Look at John. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. He told them, go and tell Peter, are you there? Are you there? Hallelujah. And look, open your Bible to Luke 24. Luke 24, are you there? Luke 24. Sorry. Mark 16, rather. Mark 16. Mark chapter 16. Let's read from verse 1. Mark chapter 16. From verse 1. Look at verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him. Okay, let's read from verse, from verse uh, 4. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. Mark 16, verse 4. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right hand, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighting. And he said unto them, Be not affrighting. Ye see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen, he is not here. Behold the place we are delayed in. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he went before you into Galilee. There he is, I see him, as he said unto you. The angel specifically mentioned the name of Peter. So that Peter will know that the Lord is not having anything against him. So Jesus Christ treated 
Peter with gentleness. He didn't judge him. He didn't condemn him. But after the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, you can see the judgment in Acts chapter 5 that we have read. Even Peter, that Jesus Christ was gentle with, became a firebrand. Fast read. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. But Peter said, Ananiah, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Why it remained, was it not thy own? After it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy own heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananiah hearing this was fed down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came upon all them that had this thing, fire, consuming fire. That's only goes for you. He came on the day of Pentecost as consuming fire. Three hours after, the wife came and said, to lie again, and immediately she died. For seven, and it was about three about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye showed the lamb for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How we see that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband at the door, and they shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the goat. And the young men came in and find her dead. And carry her forth, bury her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as had these things. Consuming fire. Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost as consuming fire. And you have been seeing how it's consuming. When you come to Acts chapter 13. At chapter 13, you will see a bad Jesus, a sorcerer, that confronted Paul. Look at verse 8. At chapter 13, verse 8. And Helimus, the sorcerer, for Saul is his name by interpretation, we stood there, seeking to turn away the deputy from faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, Filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, we thou not cease to perform the right way of the Lord. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking him, seeking some to lead him by the way. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Again, you see consuming fire. The fire came to make us to be partaker of nature of God. God is a consuming fire. He came also to make us to become fire. God said, it's not my word like fire. And when the Holy Ghost came upon believers on the day of Pentecost, their word become fire. The very reason why the Holy Ghost came upon us is to make us to become partaker of divine nature. That's why you see Peter addressing the people 
he spoke with all boldness not afraid of anybody Acts chapter 4 Acts chapter 4 now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John Acts chapter 4 verse 13 now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Christ when fire come upon you you will be bold you will share the nature of God you will be afraid of no man The Bible says the righteous as bold as lion. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. When the Spirit of God come upon you, you will be bold. Because the Spirit of Sonship is a spirit of boldness. You will not be afraid of anything. You know everything in air, on earth and everything, everything is owned by your Father. If anybody is challenging, you say, keep shut your mouth. Everything belongs to my father. For God has not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit you have now is the spirit of boldness. You walk boldly. You talk boldly. Because you have the very nature of God in you. You know God your father God is your father and he knows he holds everything on earth and in heaven and so you are not afraid of anybody when you talk about fire you talk about purity fire purify and you, one thing you know about God is holiness. So the fire came to make you to be as holy as God. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. I read verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Who should I am not worthy to be? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And when fire comes, what will happen? Verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand? And he will thoroughly porch his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But we burnt up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Fire purified. He burnt off every chaff of sin out of our life. It makes us to be only like God. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter one. I read verse fifteen. 
but I see which has called you is only be ye only in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye only for I am only. The purpose of fire is to purify us. The purpose of fire is to purge us. The purpose of fire is to make us to be only like God. Fire came so that we can become partakers of divine nature. So it doesn't make up. When you say I am baptized in the Holy Ghost, I am filled with the Holy Ghost, I speak in tongues, and you are still living in sin, it doesn't add up. The purpose of Holy Ghost, the purpose of fire is to purge you. Is to purify you. Is to make you to be holy. Fire came. So that we can be sealers of good works. We can be burning for the Lord. Shining for the Lord. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bosom, but on a candlestick. And he giveth light unto all that are in the house. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The purpose of fire is to produce good works. These good works are what we call fruit of the spirits. Love, peace, joy, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance those are the good works you live right you follow peace with men you love god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind likewise you love your neighbor as yourself you are at peace with everybody you are gentle. You are not harsh. You are not a difficult man. You have long suffering, patient with people, patient with difficult people, patient with hard people. Goodness. You do everything possible within your ability to help others. You are seized. You feed the hungry. You clothe the naked. You hear the seed. Goodness. And you have faith in God. You have a good relationship with God. You are humble before God. You are not proud. And you, are, you, you exercise self-control. Everything about you is moderation. Good works. Fire is given to us so that our light can shine and people will see our good works. The fruit of the Holy Ghost. Fire came to impart into our life the nature of God. The question is this, do you have the nature of God? Are you loving as God? 
Are you holy as God? Are you considerate as God? Are you gentle as God? The Bible say, David say, thy gentleness has made me great. God was gentle with him. Are you gentle as God? Are you good as God? Who gave us good things? He gave us the rain in time of rain and feed our mouth with good things. Do you do good to people? The purpose of fire is to be able to impart upon us the very nature of God. The question is this, do you have the nature of God? Are you like God? Do you share the nature of God? 